Welcome to World Crisis Radio. It's the 26th of September, Friday, here in Washington, D.C. Webster Topley uh, speaking to you. Now, the uh, dramatic events, in particular of the last week, revolve around the Rogue Network. Yes, indeed, the War Party. This is the invisible government, parallel government, secret government, deep state, call it what you like, them, that's fine too, this town sometimes, meaning Washington, D.C. It is a private network, a Wall Street network embedded in the federal government, and it often tries to dominate the federal government on issues of importance to it. And you want to go back and look at the blowing up of the main, the assassination of McKinley, the U.S. entry into World War I, Pearl Harbor, look at questions like the assassination, 9-11, obviously Iran, all kinds of events, courtesy of the Rogue Network. So the Rogue Network spoke up last Friday and last Saturday. Let me set the stage for you. Remember, the big issue last week was, is Obama enough of a warmonger? This is the problem posed by the rotten, degenerate uh, U.S. ruling class, the rotten, degenerate elites that dominate this country. And uh, the question was, isn't Obama insufficiently a warmonger? And those were the things that were debated, more or less, in somewhat veiled form on the various uh, blab broadcasts of the weekend. And in particular, the question was, is Obama's uh, military strategy sufficient to deal with this force of 25 or 30,000 terrorist crazies known as ISIS, ISIL, Daesh, um, or other names? Khorasan now is another branch of this thing. But that mass of, uh, of terrorist uh, veterans who were in Libya were shipped by the U.S. and NATO to, to Turkey. This was how Ambassador Stevens lost his life, and then were shipped across the Turkish-Syrian border into Syria, and then across the uh, Iraq border into Iraq. And his attempt to recycle them again, which I'll get into with the help of Turkey once more. So much so that on Friday of last week, Friday, November, uh, September 19th, the headline of the Washington Post was, In Military... Skepticism of Obama's plan. Generals dissent on ground option. They want the heavy tank divisions and the heavy infantry divisions. Unbelievable. Uh, one prominent critic, retired Marine General James Mattis, M-A-T-T-I-S. For those of you who are keeping score, that's Monster Mattis, a warmonger and an, a very outspoken one, a very blatant and uh, impudent warmonger, indeed, is Monster Mattis. Uh, so they're bashing Dempsey because uh, Dempsey did not go all the way to get the ground troops in there. But uh, at a hearing in the Senate earlier last week, as we reported, Dempsey had said he entertained the possibility of having some uh, ground advisors, some ground forces, infantry advisors, and things like this uh, deployed, but that he has not had not made that uh, decision yet. So this was at the occasion of the Dempsey-Hagel Secretary of Defense appearance at the um, Senate uh, Armed Forces Committee, I guess. Uh, and uh, the idea is that's not enough. Howard Buck McKeon, Republican of California, warmonger, says this is not enough. Obama should take orders from his military commanders. That was Bush, remember? Bush said he followed the advice of the military and therefore the troops had to stay. The troops are not the determinants of policy. The troops are the instruments of policy. They don't uh, determine their own existence in the way that Bush and some of these others seemed to uh, say. Um and here's the headline on the inside. Strategic rift widens between Obama and Pentagon. This is now the big issue. Strategic rift widens between Obama and Pentagon. 
So that hit the streets in the morning, Friday, September 19th, a week ago today. And by evening, what did we have? Breaches of White House security. And we can divide these into the jumper. Uh, this is Omar Gonzalez, age 42, jumped over the north fence. That's the part that everybody sees, faces Lafayette Park, looks up uh, 16th Street, looks up towards the Hay Adams Hotel, the AFL CIO, and so forth. Jumped the north fence, sprinted to the White House doors before he was stopped. Dogs were there. They were not used. Snipers did not fire. The door was not locked. He went right in. He had a knife, a Spyderco VG-10 folding knife, three and a half inch serrated blade, enough to do some damage. They, the Secret Service said, oh gosh, we thought he was unarmed. An Iraq war veteran, a sniper, PTSD, retired on disability. In other words, a patsy, a perfect patsy. Uh, later, it turns out that he had been uh, stopped and questioned by the Secret Service on perhaps two occasions. He was found running around the outside of the White House, the periphery, with a hatchet in his belt. Now, that's one. One is bad. But when you get two, you have a pattern. And what I'm telling you now, what I'm going to tell you, is stuff that has been ignored by the Washington Post. The Washington Post up till uh, this week, for example, the Monday edition, Monday, September 22nd to the Washington Post. Secret Service considers a bigger White House buffer intrusion could lead to added screening for visitors. Wait a minute. It's intrusion Dear Washington Post, more than one, plural, S. Here's the second one. The barging vehicle, a vehicle that did not stop. The man, and you have to remember, Pennsylvania Avenue is closed between the White House to the south, Lafayette Park to the north, from the Treasury all the way over to the Renwick Gallery. This is closed to traffic. This is essentially a pedestrian zone. It actually helps free speech because that zone is not under the Secret Service, but it's under the D.C. traffic police, and they don't care about demonstrations, so you can go there with your soapbox and have your say. But you can't bring a car in there, and there are now physical barriers, pilings that come up out of the street that prevent automobiles, trucks, and so forth from coming in there. Now, the uh, story is that Kevin Carr of Shamong, New Jersey, uh, was driving a an automobile, and he tried to attach himself to the tail end of a group of cars, a motorcade of some sort, but not not the presidential one. Obama had just flown away, according to these reports, uh, and he tried to get in. Uh, so this happened at the 15th and E Streets, right? Uh, and he's uh, trying to get in. The Secret Service tells him to stop. Uh, he didn't stop, and then he refused to leave. So according to this, he did not hit the barriers, but he got out of the car and was arrested when he refused to leave. Now, of the two, this one is by far more important, right? <clears throat> Whatever a person can carry can pack quite a punch. But, of course, a car bomb is incomparably more serious. These two constitute a huge pattern. And how do we make sense of this? Well, I'm afraid it's this. The rogue network is not happy. The war party is signaling unmistakably to Obama, make war, escalate. We demand escalation. And it doesn't mean just Syria or Iraq. There's a Ukrainian anti-Russian component built in. This is a severe emergency that has now been introduced. Back in a minute on World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Once again, it's Friday, the 26th of September, and we're here in Washington, D.C. Twin warnings to Obama. Not exactly a horse's head in a bed, but getting there. Uh, two deranged individuals, uh, one of whom was undoubtedly on the Secret Service database should have been prominent in all of their calculations when he's in 
or around Washington. This is now suspicious in the extreme. And it will be said, well, the Secret Service is a very troubled agency. They're in chaos. They're in deep trouble. And we will hear citations of the prostitutes and drinking incident in Cartagena, Colombia, a couple of years ago at the Summit of the Americas. So they were organizing an orgy. There was also an incident here in the Hay Adams Hotel where a Secret Service agent had uh, shown a prostitute his uh, revolver or gun and uh, showed her the bullets and she wanted to keep one of the bullets as a souvenir. He then tried to get back into the room to retrieve the bullet and was uh, arrested then himself. Uh, there's another one on a recent foreign trip. A Secret Service agent uh, passed out from alcohol consumption in one of the corridors. So, yeah, it's a troubled agency. We now have the new Secret Service Director, Julia Pearson, P-I-E-R-S-O-N. She's supposedly trying to clean this place up. And then the debate is, can she do it? Because after all, she is uh, an internal product of the culture of the Secret Service, if we dare say that. I would say the following. This is a true emergency. And it is indispensable to fight back against the rogue network with purges. People must uh, lose their jobs. I would have to say Obama or somebody who likes him, somebody who wants Obama to stay in office or who might even care about legality. That is also possible, although hardly hardly the first possibility. Uh, when we had Benghazi right, in September of 2012, this was, of course, an October surprise conducted in the age of early voting, therefore in September – designed to catapult Obama out of the White House and Romney and the neocons in. The warmongers, the neocons, the rogue network, these are increasingly playing this card, uh, get Obama out and get a suitable warmonger in there, because Obama, say what you will, he stalls, he temporizes, he tergiversates. You get it. He's trying to dodge what they want him to do. He doesn't want to do it. He saw the fate of LBJ at least in the history books, and uh, he's also seen how, how dangerous this can be. So, um, at that time, you'll remember, Petraeus was ousted from the CIA under the cover of the Broadwell scandal. General Allen, who has now been brought back by Secretary of State Kerry as the uh, ISIS czar, Allen was also ousted because of his liaison with Jill Kelly and all those emails, and we saw several dozen flag officers, generals and admirals, were ousted. Now, we hope to see in the near future a series of top intelligence community people ousted for not stopping this. This should have been stopped. And uh, one obvious thing is to fire the top three, four or five layers of the Secret Service, right? get rid of them. Uh, bring up the junior people who perhaps have not yet solidified into these networks, in particular the rogue network, the invisible government. Another way, way you could do it is to bring in one or even two other intelligence agencies, say the, sec the Secret Service is manifestly incapable of guaranteeing the security, the safety of the president, therefore we bring in DIA, customs, who knows what, right? some other agency, or you could create your own. That's dangerous, right? That gives you the plumbers, but that's also something you can do. And you could have an agency that would do nothing but spy on the Secret Service and other agencies with the attempt to detect security threats. I think uh, people would have been happy if, uh, in retrospect, if Kennedy had done that. Kennedy might have lived to, to fill out his, uh, his time in office. But as it is right now, what we're seeing is a very heavy-handed warning to Obama, and I don't think there can be any doubt about uh, what is the what the subject of this is. This is geostrategic.